in this module we start with some examples uh, of uh, delta theorems what we have discussed in our last module that is we start with finding large sample distribution of sample coefficient of variation and sample generalized variance then we pass on to another important aspect of delta theorems uh, namely delta theorems for vector valued functions actually in our last modules we have discussed delta theorems using uh, univariate uh, random variables or multivariate random variables but in this case we shall discuss delta theorems where the function itself is vector valued uh, then we shall apply this delta theorem to find the large sample distribution of sample moments and hence to find the large sample distribution of sample skewness measures uh, in fact we shall discuss finding the large sample uh, joint distribution of uh, different moments moments uh, sample moments of different orders but uh, we emphasize on finding the large sample distribution of the sample skewness measure so in this module we start with finding the large sample distribution of sample coefficient of variation this is an application of the delta theorem what we have discussed in our last module uh, suppose xi are iid with mean mu and variance sigma square and we assume that the fourth order moments are finite then the population coefficient of variation is defined as capital v uh, equal to 100 times sigma divided by mu naturally a consistent estimator of the above is small v which is 100 times smallest divided by x bar assuming x bar not equal to 0 where s is the sample standard deviation and x bar is the sample mean suppose the asymptotic distribution of small v is required first of all uh, since we have already found the joint distribution of uh, 1 by n summation x i minus mu whole square minus x bar minus mu whole square we first try to represent v in terms of this so we are fortunate enough to find such a representation that is we can write our small v as 100 times square root of 1 by n summation x i minus mu square minus x bar minus mu square whole thing divided by x bar so using our previous multivariate clt uh, we have square root of n multiplied by square we have square root of n multiplied by a vector with components t1 n minus theta 1 and t2 n minus theta 2 uh, is asymptotically bivariate normal with dispersion matrix sigma where theta 1 equal to 0 and theta 2 equal to sigma square and sigma is as defined earlier is a 2 cross 2 matrix with first row having elements mu 2 and mu 3 and the second row having elements mu 3 and mu 4 minus mu 2 square so as earlier t1 n is 1 by n summation x i minus mu and t2 n is 1 by n summation i from 1 to n x i minus mu square so we have discussed the joint distribution the asymptotic joint distribution of t1 n and t2 n so we can apply delta theorem by using some suitable function g so in this case we find that uh, g x y should be defined as 100 times square root of y minus x square divided by x plus mu then g x y is a continuous function and has continuous partial derivatives in the neighborhood of theta 1 theta 2 now a little bit algebra gives the gradient vector of g evaluated at theta 1 theta 2 as a vector as a two as a two component vector with first component as minus sigma divided by mu square and the second component as 1 by 2 sigma mu and we find that since we have assumed mu not equal to 0 we find that this gradient vector is uh, different from the null vector hence we can apply delta theorem and and using delta theorem with multiple variables we find that square root of n multiplied by small v minus capital v converges in distribution to a normal variable with mean 0 and variance as given in the slide in the form of a quadratic form and a little bit algebra uh, finally expresses the asymptotic variance as uh, capital V square whole thing multiplied by mu 2 by mu square plus mu 4 minus mu 2 square by 4 sigma to the power 4 minus mu 3 by mu sigma square often we have the underlying distribution as normal and in such a case since normal distribution is symmetric 
we have mu 3 equal to 0 and using some results on uh, moments of even order we find that mu 4 equal to 3 sigma to the power 4 and hence in such a case asymptotic variance reduces to v square by 2 multiplied by 1 plus 2 v square divided by 10 to the power 4. Next we pass on to some other aspect of uh, some other application of delta theorem namely in finding the large sample distribution of generalized variance. So, suppose x alpha or iid p variate normal distributions uh, p, var p variate normal observations with mean mu and dispersion matrix sigma and we assume that this dispersion matrix sigma is positive definite. Now, define the SSSP matrix as A which is defined as summation alpha from 1 to n uh, x alpha minus x bar multiplied by the transpose of x alpha minus x bar. The sample gen generalized variance covariance matrix is defined as the determinant of S which is defined as A divided by small n. Now, it is well known that A is positive definite with probability 1 if and only if n greater than or equal to p and A has a Wishart distribution with uh, p variate Wishart distribution with parameters n and sigma where small n is defined as uh, capital N minus 1 and we have taken capital N samples. Suppose we are interested in the asymptotic behavior of the sample generalized variance. So, first of all we need to use Bartlett decomposition that is uh, we can write determinant of A divided by determinant of sigma as product of uh, vi uh, for i equal to 1 to p uh, that is the distribution of determinant of A divided by determinant of sigma is equivalent to product over i from 1 to p vi where vi has a chi square distribution with uh, n minus i plus 1 degrees of freedom and these vi's are independent for each i. Now, determinant of A's is simply determinant of A divided by n to the power p and hence determinant of A's divided by determinant of sigma uh, has the same distribution as the product i from 1 to p w i where n w i has a chi square distribution with n minus i plus 1 degrees of freedom and this w i are also independent uh, because of the independence of original variable v i. Now, expected value of w i is nothing but n minus i plus 1 divided by n because uh, the chi square variable has the expectation as its degrees of freedom and we also get the variance of w i as 2 times n minus i plus 1 divided by n square and this also follows from the fact that a chi square variable has a variance 2 times its degrees of freedom and hence uh, we get from multivariate CLT that the vector with elements w 1 minus 1 divided by square root of 2, w 2 minus 1 minus 1 by n divided by 2 times 1 minus 1 by root n, uh, 2 times 1 minus uh, 1 by n and up to w p minus 1 minus p minus 1 upon n whole thing divided by 2 times 1 minus p minus 1 upon n has a p variate normal distribution with mean vector 0 and dispersion matrix i p which implies that uh, square root of n w 1 minus uh, which implies that the vector with elements square root of n w 1 minus 1 uh, w square root of n multiplied by w 2 minus 1 up to square root of n w p minus 1 has a p variate normal distribution with mean vector 0 and dispersion matrix 2 times i p that is 2 times the identity matrix of order p. Now, uh, we take our g function as g which is a function of the variables u1, u2 up to up which is uh, defined as summation a uh, product of i from 1 to p ui which is continuous and has continuous partial derivatives in the neighborhood of uh, theta 1, theta 2 up to theta b. Uh, and in this case it is very easy to find that this uh, theta i equal to 1 for every i. Thus, the gradient vector at theta 1, theta 2, theta p for g is nothing but a vector with all components unity and hence we find that square root of n multiplied by determinant of a is divided by determinant of sigma minus 1 converges in distribution to a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 2p. 
Now we pass on to our next topic which is related to delta theorem for vector valued functions. So we pass on to our next topic which is on delta theorem for vector valued functions. Let g u be a vector valued function with q components such that uh, g u is nothing but a vector with component functions as g1, g2 up to gq. We define the matrix capital G which is of order q cross p as uh, with elements uh, the partial derivative of gi. That is uh, the elements of g are simply delta the partial derivative of gi with respect to uj uh, for different values of i and j. And we assume that g is continuous in a neighborhood of theta. If for a sequence of vector valued random variables xn, square root of n, xn minus theta converges in distribution to x, then square root of n, gxn minus g theta converges in distribution to a random variable which is g times capital X. In particular, if x has a p variate normal distribution with mean 0 and dispersion matrix sigma, then the limiting distribution of gxn comes out as q variate normal with mean 0 and, vari and dispersion matrix g sigma g dash or the transpose of g. However, the proof requires uh, some further concepts of mathematical analysis and we skip the details. Uh, anyone can find this proof in the book by Sarfling and we are not going to uh, details of this proof. So, let us concentrate on applications of this theorem. As our first example, consider the joint distribution of sample mean and variance. Suppose xn are iid with finite mean mu and variance sigma square and fourth order order moment mu 4. Define rth order raw moment m dash r as 1 by n summation i from 1 to n xi to the power r, rth order central moment as 1 by n summation i from 1 to n xi minus m1 dash all to the power r and the rth order pseudo moment mr naught which is defined as 1 by n summation i from 1 to n xi minus mu whole to the power r. Then for any r not equal to s, it is easy to observe from multivariate CLT that the limiting distribution of mr naught and ms naught is bivariate normal with mean vector 0 and dispersion matrix sigma, where uh, dispersion matrix sigma has diagonal elements mu 2 r minus mu r square and mu 2 s minus mu s square and the off diagonal element as mu r plus s minus mu r multiplied by mu s. And this can be obtained just uh, considering the fact that x i's are i i d means x i minus mu to the power r are also i i d and the covariance between x i minus mu to the power r and x i minus mu whole to the power s mu r plus s. The off diagonal element structure of sigma can be justified from the definition of mr naught because variance of mr naught is nothing but 1 by n uh, multiplied by variance of x1 minus mu whole to the power r which after a simple setup obtained as mu 2 r minus mu r square and the covariance between xi minus mu to the power r and xi minus mu to the power s is nothing but mu r plus s minus mu r multiplied by mu s. Now, uh, we have the representation that m1 dash equal to m1 naught plus mu and m2 equal to m2 naught minus m1 naught whole square. Then square root of n m1 naught minus 0 uh, that is the large sample distribution of m1 naught and m2 naught is again bivariate normal with mean 0 and dispersion matrix sigma where the dispersion matrix sigma has the elements mu2 and mu3 in the first row and mu3 and mu4 minus mu2 square in the second row. Now looking at the above representation, we define the vector valued function g with elements u1 plus mu and u2 minus u1 square. Then we get the 2 cross 2 matrix g as i2. Hence using the above result that is above delta theorem, we get that the large sample distribution of m1 dash and s square is again bivariate normal uh, with mean vector 0 and dispersion matrix in this case is sigma because g is obtained as uh, the identity matrix of order 2. Next we consider joint distribution of sample moments. Suppose xn are iid with finite mean mu and variance sigma square and we assume that moments up to order 2 are are finite. So, 
in this case uh, it is already discussed that the joint distribution of pseudo moments are easy to obtain and it follows from multivariate CLT. So, in order to find the distribution of MR that is rth order central moment, we first express MR in terms of the pseudo moments and this is not a very difficult task because 1 by n summation x i minus m 1 dash whole to the power r can be looked upon as 1 by n summation i from 1 to n x i minus mu minus m 1 naught whole to the power r and expanding this quantity in a binomial theorem we ultimately find the relationship that is m r equal to m r naught minus r choose 1 multiplied by m r minus 1 naught m 1 naught plus up to minus 1 to the power r m 1 naught whole to the power r. Thus it is easy to take the g function uh, obviously in this case if if i if we are interested in finding the distribution of mr then g is just a real valued function but with multiple arguments so in this case we define the g function as uh, given above and hence uh, one can find the large sample distribution so we start from multivariate clt and find the large sample distribution of m1 not m2 not up to mr not as r variate normal with mean vector 0 and dispersion matrix sigma where sigma has the elements mu i plus j minus mu i multiplied by mu j. Thus in this case theta equal to that is theta vector equal to z, has, has the elements 0 mu 2 mu 3 up to mu r and g satisfies all the conditions regarding continuity and differentiability with the gradient vector as a vector with elements with first element as minus r times mu r minus 1 and then the last element as unity and the rest elements are all 0 and naturally this gradient vector is non-zero thus by the delta theorem square root of n m r minus mu r converges in distribution to a univariate normal distribution with mean 0 and variance as given in the text. Now after a routine manipulation one can find this large sample variance as mu 2 r minus mu r square minus 2 times r multiplied by mu r minus 1 multiplied by mu r plus 1 plus r square multiplied by mu 2 multiplied by mu r, mi mi mu r minus 1 square. Actually it follows from the development that square root of n m r minus mu r and square root of n m r naught minus mu r minus r mu r minus 1 multiplied by square root of n m 1 naught minus mu 1 have the same asymptotic distribution and this is true for every r. So, one can find in general uh, different moments and distributions. So, for the joint asymptotic distribution of MR and MS, we note that uh, this joint distribution of MR and MS is nothing but the joint distribution. However, for the joint asymptotic distribution of MR and MS, we consider the representation uh, what we have discussed in our last presentation page and then uh, we can write this root over n. Uh, we can uh, observe that the asymptotic joint distribution of MR and MS is same as given in the text. Now the asymptotic distribution of M1 naught, MR naught and MS naught is nothing but 3 variate normal with means vector 0 and dispersion matrix sigma uh, psi where psi is given in the text and therefore the large sample distribution of MR and MS uh, is just a routine and we skip the details. However, uh, a straight after a straightforward manipulation one can find that the large sample uh, dispersion matrix of uh, MR and MS has elements sigma RS. Uh, which is defined as mu r plus s minus mu r times mu r multiplied by mu s minus r multiplied by mu r minus 1 multiplied by mu s plus 1 minus s multiplied by mu s minus 1 multiplied by mu r plus 1 plus r multiplied by s multiplied by mu r minus 1 multiplied by mu s minus 1 whole thing multiplied by mu 2. Now next we shall discuss our next example which is on joint distribution of multiple sample moments. As earlier we assume that x n are iid with finite central moments up to order 2 k uh, define uh, we can recall the definitions of central moment and pseudo moments 
and since m1 equal to 0, we define m vector as a vector with elements m2, m3 up to mk uh, and we require to find the joint asymptotic distribution of this m vector. In particular, using the delta theorems, one can easily arrive at the fact that <coughs> the asymptotic joint distribution of m2, m3 up to mk is a k-variate normal distribution with mean vector 0 and dispersion matrix sigma, where sigma is a dispersion matrix with order k-1 and with elements sigma rs and this sigma rs can be found in the presentation. Uh, now, let us discuss some interesting facts about this asymptotic joint distribution. Uh, assume that the underlying distribution is symmetric about origin and has finite even order moments of all orders. Then, it is easy to observe that mu r equal to 0 for order and mu r is a finite positive quantity if r is even. Thus, for such a distribution, we find that sigma r s equal to 0 whenever r plus s is odd. Then, from the properties of multivariate normal distribution, it follows that m r and m s are asymptotically independent whenever r plus s is odd. For example, one can check that for such an underlying distribution, m 2 and m 3 are asymptotically independent with marginals univariate normal. Our next example is related to finding the Larsen Bell distribution of sample skewness coefficient. Suppose x n are i i d random variables with finite sixth order moment mu 6 and uh, then the population skewness coefficient is defined as gamma 1 equal to mu 3 by mu 2 to the power 3 by 2 provided mu 2 is positive and since m r is a consistent estimator of mu r for any r a consistent estimate of gamma 1 is g 1 which is defined as m 3 divided by m 2 to the power 3 by 2 uh, of course, uh, if m 2 is positive. Thus, we find that g 1 is a function of two central moments. Now, in order to obtain its asymptotic distribution, we define g u v that is g function as v divided by u to the power 3 by 2 which is continuous and has continuous derivatives except for u equal to 0. Now, from the previous example, we find that the large sample distribution of m2 and m3 is bivariate normal with mean vector 0 and dispersion matrix sigma, where this uh, sigma matrix has elements sigma 2 2, sigma 2 3 and sigma 3 3. Now, a straightforward calculation gives the gradient vector of g evaluated at mu 2, mu 3 as uh, minus 3 times mu 3 divided by 2 times mu 2 to the power 5 by 2 and uh, mu 2 to the power minus 3 by 2 and hence we obtain the large sample distribution of g 1 as normal with mean 0 and variance tau 1 square, where tau 1 square um, is a function which can be expressed as uh, gamma 1 square multiplied by some function of mu 2, mu 3, mu 4, mu 5, mu 6. Uh, we refer the interested reader to the, to the book by Surfling for an explicit expression of h. However, if the underlying distribution is standard normal, since uh, g1 is invariant to location and scale, one can without loss of generality consider uh, this standard normal assumption, then mu3 equal to 0, mu5 equal to 0, that is all odd order, odd order central moments are 0 and mu4 equal to 3 and mu6 equal to 15 and hence we obtain the large sample distribution of g1 for normal parent as univariate normal with mean 0 and variance 6. Next, we shall discuss convergence rate for the sample skewness coefficient. We have seen asymptotic normality of sample skewness coefficient. Naturally, the choice of n ensuring asymptotic normality depends on the underlying distribution. So, it will be interesting to study the convergence rate for different parent distributions. For our purpose, we consider a gamma distribution a log normal distribution and beta distribution and a standard normal distribution with parameters specified as in the slide. For each of these distributions, we simulate the histogram of the variable uh, square root of n multiplied by g1 minus gamma 1 considering n equal to 40, 80 and 120. Now, it should be uh, noted that gamma 1 equal to square root of 2, 6.18 and min uh, minus 0 0.596 and 0 respectively for the above three candidate distributions. The histograms can be found in the next few slides. So, what we observe? Looking at the histograms, we find an interesting fact. For normal parent, convergence to normal is achieved for n equal to 80. 
However, for gamma distribution, we get a positively skewed distribution for n equal to 40 and 80 and then normality is reached for n equal to 120. For log normal distribution, we find a positively skewed distribution for all chosen values of n. However, for the beta distribution, we get the histogram of a negatively skewed distribution for n equal to 40 and 80 and then symmetry is reached for higher choices of n. Naturally, convergence rate to normality is the lowest for log normal distribution. Now, we know that both gamma and log normal are positively skewed and beta with specified parameters is negatively skewed. So at this point it is interesting to note that for, for, for positively skewed parents we get a positively skewed distribution and for negatively skewed parent we get a negatively skewed distribution of sample skewness coefficient in small samples. However, in short non-normal parent makes the rate of convergence slower. So we have just seen how to derive the distribution that is large sample distribution of sample coefficient of variation and then we have seen how to tackle vector valued functions to obtain the large sample distribution and we, we have also seen the large sample distribution of sample central moments and different functions of it. Uh, finally, we have seen the large sample distribution of sample skewness coefficient. Uh, we have seen some interesting features regarding the underlying parent and the nature of the distribution in small samples and in our next module we shall discuss large sample distribution of sample kurtosis coefficient and discuss also the independence of uh, sample skewness coefficient and sample kurtosis coefficient for normal parents and also give some applications of this.